You know, every shot you see like that on YouTube, the guy has to drive back around and get the camera. It's a lot of extra work. Morning, Maverick, and who's this guy? This is- uh, oh, oh, hey, what's going on? I remember that guy, he used this to work is, for us. This is Lex, <laughs> Alex. It was funny because you said that you and John have been getting a bunch of stuff done, and that's usually not the case. Oh, <laughs> usually it's okay, me, and Ray all right. get, me and Ray getting everything done. <laughs> all right, let me give you a rundown here. Those are screws. That's a tape measure. Uh, that's a speed square. You guys are freaking hilarious. You know that? Oh, yeah, I forgot I'm a roofer now. I don't know how to do any of Oh, we got you something too, bud. You did? Yeah. I'm Baby's first speed square. <laughs> what is this for? <laughs> you know. I don't do trim, bro. I don't, I don't do trim. I don't need that thing. <laughs> We're going to let Jason get going with the funnest part, which is to try to get through the house with 12 foot long boards. Where am I going? To the back dick. <laughs> which way? Straight through the house, through the kitchen. Where's the kitchen? It's always good to come up with a plan of attack. So this morning, we're gonna do our outriggers that stick out and give us our front overhang. And then we'll put the two front fascia boards on. At that point, we can chalk and clip off the side fascias, sub fascia them, and then we can go boom, sheave this thing. That's our game plan. I got a 412. <laughs> We're gonna clip off these rafter tails and I have to figure out where to clip them so that our soffit height matches this existing soffit and our two roof lines, you know, match and the gutter line can be the same gutter line. So all I'm gonna do, we know that that roof's the same pitch as our new roof. And so I'm just gonna measure out from framing and mark where this framing ends. And the weird thing is though, this is gonna look a lot deeper <clears throat> because we don't have four inches of siding, this brick on our addition and we're not gonna have it. So. This really shows 16 inches, but on the addition part, it's gonna look like about 20 inches because they got four inches of siding, eh? Eh. Uh, and that was confusing me for a second. I'm like, why is this overhang coming out so much further to be level? It didn't make sense, but then I, then I figured it out. So mm. that's what's happening. Uh, so we're gonna clip these off and hopefully get it aligned. Look at Jono's, uh, <laughs> catch me outside. <laughs> How about that? How about that? <laughs> I'm running out of places, man. I'm waiting for the new belt. <laughs> I think you gotta go from the top. Probably. Math don't lie. I don't know what that shot looked like. I wasn't looking at it, so sorry about that. <laughs> Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> Uh, this is a little tiny guy here. Jay, we got it done here, uh, finally. <laughs> I'm about to go home. We uh, broke a window down there. Whoa, I, whoa, 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 uh, whoa. I broke a window. There you go. <laughs> I lopped off a piece of wood about this long on my last cutoff, and I didn't want to put my hand on it because it was so close to the blade, and it fell and bounced off that window ledge right into the window. Broke it. So I got to pay for that. Right. And yeah, the not, teeniest, the not teeny here one. or here so much, but yeah. more like right in there. Yep. And then I inch monstered my mark here. It was supposed to be 21 three quarters. I marked 20 and three quarters. Jason marked his right. And so when I realized it was all crooked, we had to add these extension blocks on to get this, you know, running perpendicular from the house like it should be. And then we realized we're gonna have to frame all this soft stuff now because we don't want to bring this bag out here. So, dang it. It's Friday though. Friday. Yeah. Thursday, yes. I do feel pretty confident that the bottom of our framing here is flush with the bottom of that framing, which is a half inch higher than this finished material. So 
That was the one shining moment that we had. I think that's right. We're getting our sheathing on here. And what's gonna be really important is that however we finish this today is watertight. What's it supposed to do this a weekend? Rain. Rain, like it always does here. So I put a big bead of Lexel there to keep water from going under there. And then we're gonna put the sheathing on, which is gonna run past. I'm gonna do that again. And we may even have to cut some kind of like flashing in under these shingles. I don't know yet. Um, we just don't want it to leak right. over the weekend before a roofer gets it shingled and put together permanently. Yeah. So that's, when you're adding on, it's like you can't get the inside wet. It's finished. And that makes it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and more stressful. Way more I'm stressful. so stressed out, like by the thought of, you know, rain just raining into their house. <laughs> Normally we don't care. It's just framing. Right. You know? It's a lot easier whenever you can do it from start to finish. And yeah. It's brand new. Yeah, it is. This is stressful, so uh, just keep trucking. We're gonna be trying a new Sashko product for me today. Through the Roof seals everything that goes through the roof. Sticks to wet surfaces, and we're gonna put a big freaking bead right there. And we're also gonna fix uh, some stuff like right here. There's a bunch of these exposed. I'm gonna go ahead and fix those up for Matt too. So we just got this side sheathed and what we did to get going was just started our first sheet parallel with the fascia board down there. When we got to the ridge, we are like an inch and a half off of straight with the ridge. And I don't, I don't know why, okay? We're just framing to the deck that was there, which could have been way out of square. We didn't even check. So on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and check fascia to ridge on both ends there. And we're gonna maybe split the difference a little bit if it turns out to be the same, so. Hook me on the corner on the end down here, Jono. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's our new motto. It don't matter. On the rafter or on the fascia? <laughs> fascia. Okay. 127 and eighth. All right, now go all the way down to that end. Let's see if it's the same. Or if we got to split the D, or if it don't matter. All right, 127 and a half. What was it over there? I don't know. We can watch this video and find we'll out. We'll have to rewatch it. I think it was 127 and eighth. So it is like at least three eighths difference. So on this sheet, we're just gonna like chalk a line that kind of splits the difference instead of all the difference being at the top, I think might be better. It doesn't really matter as long as the end of our sheet goods land on a rafter, it. right? It don't matter. It doesn't matter unless the guy shingling the roof like follows our plywood lines as his reference for getting the shingles straight or something, which I hope he doesn't. That's gonna be you anyway, bro. Oh, no, no. Our shingling career is over. I got that turf toe. <laughs> I still got it. Turf toe? Yeah, from, from kneeling like that with your foot. What do you, Terrell Owens? <laughs> what do you mean, turf toe? Terrell Owens? <laughs> T-L-A-A. It's Terrell, not Terrell. What, Terrell, Terrell, whatever. T-Rail. Okay. Let's take a short break to thank our sponsor for today's episode, AG1 by Athletic Greens. So thank you to Athletic Greens. We really appreciate it. And if you don't know what AG1 by Athletic Greens is already, it's a nutrition company that has created a movement around simplifying your health. And it's not just for athletes, it's for life leads like busy moms and dads and people like you and me. My wife and I have been using AG1 for quite a while now, and the main thing I get out of it is extra energy. On top of the energy I already get from drinking a bunch of coffee, this makes me feel even better, and that's the main reason I like to use it. AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving. And this special blend of ingredients helps your body's nutritional needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 is also incredibly convenient. It's just one scoop or one travel pack in eight ounces of water every day and that's it. And here's the bottom line for most people, AG1 tastes good. You can drink it, I can drink it. It's the best tasting supplement of its kind that I've ever tried personally. So if you're interested in trying it, go to the link in our description now to get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Again, Athletic Greens is going to give my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Make sure to check out the link in our description. Thank you again so much to AG1 by Athletic Greens. We appreciate your support. Let's get back to work. Let's take just a second to stare at some tools. Jono's got his Milwaukee pack out 
and all his Milwaukee batteries in there, completely OCD style, which I actually appreciate. Uh, oh, and chargers underneath. And all the tools in that one. You're living the dream, bud. I don't know about the dream. <laughs> it was a living nightmare. You can plunge cut with the chicks, all right? I mean, you can. Uh, yeah. Plan B. Oh. Well, pro tip on getting these uh, oddly shaped pieces cut correctly, what we're doing is we're placing our common sheet or our big sheet and then we're snapping a chalk line across the top of it and extending it to our corner here. And then I'm taking my tape and I'm running it across the corner, just kind of like as a straight edge till I actually contact the roof on that top corner. And so you can see right there, 50 is our actual cut, even though our last piece of framing is there. So that's how we're doing that. Um, you could do it a couple different ways though. Look out, Trey's <laughs> getting stung by a bee. I was trying to hold it still. 50 on top and then down here, um, what we did was something similar. What I did was just planed out a board like this till it hit and then uh, put a, a mark. And then I just put this board parallel to my sleeper here and marked it like that. So um, this piece here, we're gonna go four and a half at the bottom. Got our final waterproofing until the shingles come. So we've got a layer of the through the roof on our framing, uh, through the roof sealant on this edge, and then this zip system tape just mashed into the shingles. And I think that's gonna be watertight, you know, for a while. It won't be watertight forever. So what about the shingles? How the heck are they gonna put shingles on this that are now watertight? And there's two ways I think you could do it. You could cut these existing shingles here, flip them up and slide a piece of valley flashing up there tack it while the shingles are held up and then flap it down, it would run up. And both sets of shingles would run near the center of that. Or you could tear off shingles that would run up on this roof, kind of staggering back and replace them with shingles that lap up this roof. Then you could either weave the shingles or you could do a California cut of these shingles coming up over those shingles that lap up this roof. So there's like three different ways you could do it. I think we're gonna hire it out though. To someone else that is really good at it. Yeah, we'll let someone else figure it out. Yeah, like Hector. Yeah. Hector can do it. We finally wised up a little bit and we're taking our material up and over the roof instead of through the house, which I'm not sure is easier. Is it? Is it easier? It, I think it is. Okay. I think it is. It's not good either way. No, it's not. <laughs> Remodeling is slow. I mean, this is, you know, we're used to flying because you don't have any constraints. I think we're too full after lunch to do any work. I can't even think right now. I'd like 16 tacos. <laughs> you think he's joking? You need a big box plus something else plus a couple other things. I would be terrible if I lived this close to Taco Bell. Wow. All right, what's next? Okay, so we got to tear down this rail because we're going to build a wall here. It's going to have a window in it. And I think we got to get the big saw and cut this brick out so that the wall can tie back to framing here. So okay, you didn't mention anything about that to me earlier. <laughs> I Ray, think, yeah, get the big saw. Get the what? Get big, the big saw. saw. Power cord, big saw. You can cut that. And brick we're out. gonna cut loose all. We're cutting the brick out now. We're gonna cut loose all this bracing too because now that the uh, roof sheathing's on, it's holding the structure from going side to side, and our ceiling joists are now holding this thing from 
wanting to spread so we can get rid of our temporary ridge support, all that stuff. Perfect. Should I'll do good. that. Ray, you cut the... Hey, cover that up. Said his neighbor has a construction dumpster over here somewhere. So. Are you serious? Yeah. I, I, he said <laughs> he has permission to throw stuff in. So. <laughs> if anybody asks, I'll just say Matt said it was okay. Oh, well, Matt said it was okay. How am I supposed to get out of here? Oh, uh, crap. There we go. Maybe he needs some help in here. That sounds like the whole house is coming down from the inside of the house. No, I was in there. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not falling down in there. <laughs> we finally found a brick tie, which is all that's holding this brick to the house. That's gonna be heavy. Yeah, especially for Ray. <laughs> we just put our plate down here and we really debated whether to do the walls after we fur up with the two layers of the Advantech, but we've decided not to because we want the Advantech to run across where this wall is gonna be taken out and cover up the top of the brick and across the framing. So we've really got to do this first which may take away this plate as a nailer for the bottom of the drywall. If so, we can just block in little pieces between the studs to build back up another inch and a half. So just something to note that we've been thinking about. And um, there is gonna be sheathing that runs down across all of this too, to completely separate where water couldn't get in any of the layers. So. What? What's up there, Kyle? No, not that side, the what? edge. Edge. Are you put like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. We don't have any PT lumber out here, so we're just making a flashing. Because it don't matter. Because uh, it, don't, it matter. don't matter. This will work fine. Oh, this is going to contact the edge of this brick here, and uh, we just don't want it to wick moisture. That'll sure keep it out. Won't it? Sure will. Zip system. All right, that's a wrap for today. We've got our roof dried in and some of the walls built. Uh, everybody's gotta go watch their kids play baseball games this afternoon, except for Jono. He's gonna go stare at his girlfriend's new bike. <laughs> so we'll be back here Monday and we'll continue framing our walls. We might even start on some of this finished material, our fascia and our soffits done. Vegemite.